thing. So your item build is fine with the Shurias, the cooldown reduction boots. Or you want mobility boots. You can do that. Some people are doing that. CDR boots yeah, are generally I, the best one though. I feel like I buy different boots based off of the amount of roaming I have to do. So if I verse like a support that I feel like is going to be roaming mid lane a lot, I go Movies. And then if I feel like I'm going to be in lane more, then I go Lucidity. I would say on Cillian is quite unique actually so I think you could probably get away with the majority of your games with just CDR boots because you can speed yourself up and mm -hmm. then having the CDR boots then will obviously make that lower cooldown um, okay so yeah I'd, I'd recommend leaning more towards those boots of lucidity if possible um okay yeah but, but you know, the, the primary rune, if you go airy your runes seem fine I think most people lean more towards Scorch, I'm just trying to check. Because uh, I do think Zillion is a decent support champion to play, but not many people play it. So it's quite, yeah. uh, there's more uncommon picks. I um I feel like I play him a lot because he's more forgiving. Like I wouldn't say I'm the best when it comes to like uh mechanics sometimes. And I feel like Zillion is a little bit more forgiving. Like whereas Lux, if you miss your EQ combo, um it's a lot more punishing than if I miss like a bomb and I just kind of back away. Yeah, I mean, let's have a look at one of your games. I don't know. Do you have my stream open at all? Yeah, and then um, the one I wanted you to look at was the one that I went three, four, and fifteen. It's uh twenty nine thirty four is the game time. Three, four, fifteen. Oh, you scrolled past it. I think. Sorry. Uh, three, four, fifteen. Okay, cool. Uh, this one, the 29 minute one. You think mm -hmm. that was a good one? Alright. Let's have a look. <clears throat> so what have we got? Let me put my minimap covers on. Turn it off. There we go. So what have we got? Morgana, Zeri, Caitlyn, Zillion. So yeah, you guys can in theory output them quite easily in lane, I'd say. Zeri mm -hmm. is quite short range. The only thing you have to kind of be worried about is Morgana Binding. Let's go back to that. Alright. Okay. Standard pull. QQ. For vision, I like that. There's one thing I would be where Oh, you already had this brush warded, but if you don't have this brush warded, is this your own ward? No, it's the AD carry, so they tried to invade, um, and then he dropped the ward as he was okay. exiting. So yeah, that's fine. So I was gonna say, like, if, this, if there's ever not a ward here and you're pulling for red, always look to go t towards the Krux. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you make and that happen or not. We, yeah, I usually do, if, especially if the enemy is running Ignite, because um, I usually run Exhaust, so... Um, we normally take the safer pathing if I don't have vision. Okay. I mean, against like this team composition, you could run, <clears throat> you could run ignite if you really wanted to. Um, a bit, a bit. How aggressive do you feel like you're in the laning phase? Do you think you're super aggressive, or do you think you're like much more of? I think I'm. I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, in okay. terms of aggression. I will say, like, with something with a Caitlyn, she's... Caitlyn basically has to kind of win laning phase. So I would be yeah, more tempted I, to go towards Ignite. And I will say, just so you know, that um the, the Caitlyn's my duo. Okay, do you with this person a lot? Yeah, he's actually a jungle main, um, but we do ADC support sometimes for, okay, for fun. So I think he's, like, transitioning more to that role. Okay, so thank you for telling me. So I'll try and talk a little bit more in terms of a duo context. So I might talk a little bit more about... um wave management more than usual then okay perfect it be uh more beneficial for you guys than if you play a lot together all right so you're about to hit up two good 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 i think you could have probably postured up more just before hitting this level two so you know mm -hmm. the, you know the, the amount of minions for level two right right three melee yeah yeah um, so, on the second wave. yeah so like around here um i would probably be since you have like guaranteed vision of this brush i'll be playing more in the brushes rather than out in the open. Okay. Um, because even even if, say, for example, you get hit by a binding, they're still level one. Uh, and the worst thing is you just basically take, taking damage from Morgana Q. 
But if you are mm -hmm. able to hit two and they got kind of overextended, because if you were in this brush, for example, if you were like where this ward was, you right. could enter into territory of potentially catching up this Morgana um, right. for a level two. So do, do look to be in a more aggressive stance if you do have level two advantage. Okay. Okay, nice double bomb. I was liking your auto attacks as well before that. You, I noticed you were doing some auto attacks though when you were level 1, that was nice. Okay. Once again, like even if they have the brush warded, I'd just try and utilize that still. Yeah, those auto attacks are good whenever she uses binding. Speed up a little bit here. I think ideally in this situation, you don't know where the enemy jungler is, and I think you're kind of feeling it as well because you haven't got a spare ward for it because you had to put a ward on a try. You, yeah, don't want so to be stuck I actually, in this situation too long. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good idea, and I'm sure it doesn't work in higher elo, but I like fake like I was warding in river, and then she actually pings that I warded um, right. because she thought I actually warded in yeah. river. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea. I think in, in IDD in their situation that they probably would have a ward in the river anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. But yeah, just in like this situation, you don't want to be here like kind of too long, um, unless you absolutely know where the enemy jungler is. You don't want to get caught out like, you know, him flying through here. Like against the fiddle six par thing is a little bit more predictable because he's going to start blue to get the right. regeneration. So he's probably doing blue and then all the way up to top, but... Just be wary, trying to make sure you like maybe more focus on poking down the wave to, to make sure it hits the turret. Uh, mm -hmm. So you don't get stuck there too long. So I think you guys know that, yeah, Fiddle 6 is now top, so you can go kind of crazy here as much as you like. I'm not sure you're pathing here. I think you should just be like in the lane, like being. A nuisance, making it difficult for Zeri to look to last hit, for example, since we know that right. the Fiddle Six is top side. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, the one question I do have is so I'm trying to like rotate bombs between Zeri and Morgana, knowing she can only black shield one target. Is it better that I rotate the bomb so she has to pick which one she prevents damage on, or would it be better to just full commit and try to double bomb a target? Um, I just think just get bombs on whoever you feel like you can do. But regarding your mana, though, that's probably the main thing. I'd say, um, Yeah, your, your build here is quite tight on mana. I would just say, like, play around your mana foe band. Just when you start entering into the, any support that you're playing, when you start entering into this, like, half mana situation at the first mm -hmm. start of the game, just play around the mana foe band buff. Like, look it in to go to Q and then back off. Um, okay. It's going to be very difficult to get a kill here anyway, I think. Um, this is more of, like... You can siege them under the tower. You can maybe look for a cheeky t tower plate. And then when you recall on the first back, you should then have enough mana to potentially look for a kill if they do make a mistake. So okay. it kind of becomes a bit tricky down here because um, you would have to land, as you said, like a, a stun. And then Caitlyn then have to be in range to then do a trap. And then it gets mm -hmm. a bit janky after that. So... Um, I, I would just yep. look to, honestly just to poke. You've been doing fine what you're doing in terms of poke here. I would just look for mana flip band. Like look for the look for the Zeri here's fine. Like that's really nice. Okay, she black shields, but it's got like a twenty something second cooldown. Yeah, twenty two mm -hmm. second cooldown. So like maybe you could fish out the black shield here, for example. Um and then go, okay, she's used black shield, then that, now I can like super posture up ahead because now they can't block my Crack control, they can't stop the slow from coming through, they can't stop the stun, maybe we can look for a kill. There's an opportunity mm -hmm. here. Right. Because if they land a binding on either of you, you know neither of you are gonna die. You've got way too much health. So yeah, like this posturing here is good. And then once again, once you're in this kind of like lane situation, I would be more wary about being ganked that soon. You do have a, a yeah. nice ward here. But it would be like on the back of my head. I wouldn't want to be overextending for too long. Right. I think she's. I definitely think we stay in lane way too long here. Uh, we stay for quite a bit longer. Okay. 
So like here, for example, would be a good recall timing because they would have to mm -hmm. deal with this huge wave. Um, right. It's still quite a lot of health on that first plate. I know the first pet goes down quite quickly, but with no items and these low levels, it is kind of difficult. I would just say from this point on, you know you're not really going to get a kill here. I would just say, take this take this as a win. Both of you recall. Get items, come back into the lane. If Zeri has recall, which she has done, then she loses a lot of XP and CS anyway. If she stays, mm -hmm. then she then you can put yourself in a really like dominant lane position in terms of like setting yourselves up for them to come back into lane and be like first one there, control the wave. Right. So yeah, here that would have been a really nice recall timing. If you're not mm -hmm. gonna recall at this point, um then your bombs need to be for and her Q, the Caitlin Q needs to be focusing on the minion wave. Okay. I'd rather you focus because you're not obviously gonna get a kill on Morgana at this point. Like luckily your bomb is on hit the one of the cast minions anyway. And okay, Morgana kinda helped you out there anyway. But th this, you, you, it's quite difficult here to grab the plate still, but you, this is still a, a recall timing that you can do after you've identified that Zarya's mm -hmm. not here. A it's a trap. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily like bomb the Morgana just because I would don't want to keep hitting the turret, so I wouldn't have to... It just, just takes a little bit too long then to get the plate. Right. So here, you guys definitely need to back off now. You got the plate, you got everything that you needed, so you, you need to recall at this point. This is now super overextending. If this was Soda Q, um, I would t be telling you to like recall in the brush and ping your AD carry to go back at this point. Because there yeah, is going I to be entering into lane with items at this point now. So. I think I was communicating to my duo that I wanted to back because my mana was low, but I don't know why we stayed. Yeah, this is like a super over extension. You had, you had two, two decent wave shove ins to recall. Going for the plate is a greedy option. It is fine to do that if you feel comfortable in doing so, but then you really need to then look for like a. Like an, an, an exit to get out of this lane straight away because you don't want to be in a situation right. where you know Caitlyn's half health. Um, yeah. And then Zeri, you know, Zeri has been gone for a really long time, so she's going to be entering into the lane. Yeah, she's entering into here now through the wall. You guys, are, you can get out of this situation. Like, um, you know, just if if maybe Caitlyn just wax heal here and then you speed her up, you guys, honestly, you shouldn't be dying here. I would say Morgana actually looks pretty. Uh, that there, there, but uh, yeah, you guys, you can have mana issues now, so you're gonna have difficulty pushing in this wave. You could probably still get a recall in after that, like now. I would just say, like now, just recall, um, and just deal with the fact that you know you guys are low HP. I don't know if Caitlyn's about to die at some point, but no, we actually get a double kill here, or no, we get a kill on Zeri and then force the flash from Morgana. But honestly, I feel like it was almost luck. <laughs> Yeah, like you would, you just coincidentally block the Morgana Q there, and yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of unfortunate thing that happens, like sometimes you get positives out of things that shouldn't be happening, and it gives that positive, like, reinforcement on things that you shouldn't be. It's like negative positive reinforcement, if that makes any sense. Yeah, abs it absolutely does. So, um, so then the next game, you're thinking, oh, okay, we can be more greedy next game, do you know what I mean? And then it uh, ends up going a bit downhill from there. But this is, the, uh, yeah, I was going to say, if you guys don't recall from that point on, then I would be questioning <laughs> a lot. But yeah, so it's, 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 if you're playing a double siege lane and they're finding it really difficult to defend it, so like, say, for example, you're up against like short range AD carries like very early on, like a Kaiser or a Vayne, you, and you are playing like Caitlyn Zidian, you can look for that first turret if you know you're safe against the enemy jungler. Okay, right. But generally, you just want to set up like a decent wave, like like we mentioned. Trying to find it because it was a really nice wave actually that you guys had stacked up. This wave here, look at these blue minions. Because you just want to keep the enemy busy under turret for as long as possible. So like here, right now, straight recall. They've got to deal with what five caster minions and three melee minions. It's a long, it takes a long time to clear out those those minions. Uh, and mm -hmm. Let's have a look at your guys' gold. So yeah, Caitlyn's got one point five k gold, and you've got one point one k gold. So you could easily get. I follow you. I'd grab like boots of the city straight away and a fairy charm and a control wood. Not sure what else you could get after that. And then Caitlyn, she can buy whatever she wants, like Berserker Greaves, and then. I don't know, like, wish you could go like a noon quiver or something. The um, the 1,300 gold item plus, no, control wood herself maybe. 
So right. he got, got really nice buys there. He got a lot of cash. Is it 2,700 2, gold between you? It's a huge chunk of change, right? So yeah, anyway, let's fast forward a bit after those kills. So grab the kills. Okay, so you guys were really, really greedy. Uh, but you got double, got one kill. Uh, and you got to go back with a lot of gold. So yeah, Caitlyn has got 2,400 gold now and you've got 1,800 gold. Like as a support, you, you don't, yeah. I mean, you don't want to be holding uh, that amount of gold at all. Right. Yeah, I definitely acknowledge that we stayed way too long. Okay, so let's see what you actually buy. Let me have a look. So you do get Mirror, you get Beats 1. I think that's fine. Um, it's always personal preference in terms of... I always like going for Titty Boots. Um, just gets you out of skill shots um, nice and quickly. And allows you to reposition, allows you to be aggressive and defensive. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend trying it and see how you feel about it. Like just go grabbing boots loot of the city, like first item. And I do like in games where I'm versing Pike, I do go boots tier two first, but I, I just, I guess in this lane, I felt like Morgana wasn't really landing bindings and I could just speed us out of them anyway. Yeah. So that's fine. One thing I will say though, you've got 77 gold in your inventory and you know what you've mm -hmm. got to buy. Yeah. A control yeah. Ward. Yeah. It's pretty, that's, Devastating. <laughs> um, um, Caitlin is on I, 17 gold, so she can't buy a control ward, but I would like to see your duo pick up control ords if possible as well. So yeah, it's just, uh, that, that's, yeah, that's just something to keep aware of, just making sure that you... I think, though, that it ends up working out because my uh, uh, yeah. item transforms and I back, and then yeah. I buy it. Okay, yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, I would have waited the base anyways for that iron to be completed if it was that close, but yeah. So yeah, that's fine. I, it did the I, right I, thing in the end. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. That was kind of strange timing. Of Morgana and everything, man. Control warded. I, I, she, I don't even know why she did that, actually. She's denying Fiddlesticks the use of the boss cannon. Um, I think at that point, I wouldn't say, like, if she's going to Q, uh, sorry, if you're going to Q her and then she spell shields, I just don't think there's any point chucking out the other Q. Mm -hmm. Because it saves your rewind cooldown as well. That way, if, yeah. if Zeri comes in, you can then, you could just E yourself and then rewind and then E away. I think you're in a right. you're quite deep in this position here. I would have liked Caitlyn to tuck in a bit neat to hit to help stop this Zeri from coming onto you. Um But yeah, I wouldn't use the, the double bomb if you know that you can't get it off. Just prioritize on saving yourself, even if it's with double speed. Okay. Oh gosh, okay. You're still staying for the control wood, which was a little bit greedy considering Caitlyn wasn't coming with you, but you managed to do it anyway. Um so you're going to hit 6 on the Caitlyn. I mean, you don't necessarily have to save Caitlyn ulti in terms of for an execute. You can just like fire that out pretty quickly if they have no life still, that is. Because then it might come back off mm -hmm. off get record a bit later on. Uh, Morgana just hit 6. Okay. Quite overextended. I like the slow. That was cute because it, she didn't manage to um, spell shield up. Yeah, that's fine. Ward clearing out. So you guys have got like two options really. It's either you keep sieging in bot lane, or then you look, or you then look to move around with your jungle. I think either option is fine. I'd be tempted to keep getting this Caitlyn, your duo partner, ahead. And just keep sieging in. I'll just prioritize them just pushing in the in the wave as quickly as possible though. Like in this situation here. I don't like these minions here and stalling this wave coming down. So I would focus some more on just keep putting Q one Q on these cluster minions. Um and then just allows you to get onto the turret quicker if needed or recall if you guys want to buy. Just don't like being held up in this position here. Right. Wards. Go 
because the Yigas are getting held up, held up still at this point for quite some time. So yeah, do you look to use your Q to push in? You want, you want the, basically the lane, even if it means you can't get a play, you want the lane to reset back in the middle. And then it exposes these two up. Because then you can then use that wave to freeze it. And then just deny them off the CS. Because mm -hmm. now we're, we're, still, we're still stuck here and it's kind of, we're not getting anything from this position. Right, yeah. Gonna kind of finally, we got it shoved in. You can potentially get the plate here. All right, and then you want Caitlyn to back off. If you can, this is like a recall opportunity here because the kind of minion is coming down. So if you guys need to to, to recall, you could do. caitlyn has got one point three k gold in her pockets. So you've got one thousand. So it wouldn't be like the worst recall timing. Um, so Caitlyn, yeah, would be able to buy something from that for sure, and so would you. Um. So here is a suitable recall timing. If you feel like you wanted to stay in the lane more, I'd say that'd be viable, a little bit greedy, um, but overall I wouldn't have any major complaints about you doing that just because you are in a, you still got like a lot of resources on you. If one of you was like half HP, I would be saying one of you guys need to recall basically. Right. But because you got like a lot of mana still, a lot of health, you can stay in the lane. But at this point, I would say don't, you want the, the Caitlyn? I think the Caitlyn's in the chat, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so if you're so. Caitlyn here, you don't want to be pushing this wave in. You want to actually let it just meet up and then just last hit. If they, if you feel like that they've recalled at this point, if Caitlyn feels safe, it means you could recall. Caitlyn can just farm here by herself, relatively safe. You mm -hmm. could then recall, you can get back into lane relatively quickly, you can pick up your tier 2 boots, you can speed back into the lane. Gives you an option to potentially have like get to ward towards up here and then come back into the lane. Freeze you up. If, if you're going right. to stay in the lane, then try and stay in the brush as well because they won't know if you're roaming. So try right. not to show yourself as well. But yeah, like so yeah, the Caitlyn, hit, Caitlyn freezing this would be nice. She could probably freeze this like two or three waves. It will slowly, gradually push in. But you know, remember before how I said you should have recalled with that massive wave? Uh -huh. It would basically set up a massive wave of, of blue minions crashing into this turret. And then it would give you a really nice recall timing. Then by the time you guys get back into lane, they would have only have just started recalling to deal with it. And then you can then mm -hmm. easily get like one or two turret plates for free. And it's essentially like a kill's worth of gold. Right, okay. So just do lose utilize the freezing the wave more often. Kind of minion mist. <laughs> it's quite convenient with the Zillion bombs when you are hitting on them that they are actually landing on the uh, the the minions. Okay. Mm. Okay, I think you're kind of, kind of lucky that you didn't get punished from that gank. Let's see what I want you to learn to do. Um, because I think if you know you're going to be pushing it under turret or if you're going to be like shoving in a lot for turret players mm -hmm. there's a ward that I want you to unfortunately it's control warded sometimes it is but you can actually ward from the river to the tri brush which will help you um, prevent enemy jungles from coming down and it doesn't take a lot of time to do that so you don't have to go all the way around to yeah. do that. I saw that in your other video, like the scratch mark on the wall, then the bottom yeah, pebble. Yeah, that scratch mark, and then it's that pebble there. But I can get you to do it in a practice hall, if you like. Or I can just show you. I've got a video on it that I can just link you. Yeah, I was I was just going to reference the one that you did for the uh, for the other uh, <clears throat> player that you are looking over yeah, the so box. So yeah, so learn, the yeah, learn, learn that word. <laughs> it's going to be super helpful, especially if you like playing Siege and Champions. Okay. Because what what yeah? Because what ended up happening is because you guys, you did the right thing. You wanted to get this this you, you know brush water as quickly as possible. I think I don't think you actually went for the ward. I think you just went to exhaust. Did you have war charges? You might have not have had war charges left. It says you haven't pl placed any, but I. That can't be true. Maybe you guys have been out in lane so long that what the original wards that you planted actually have just gone away. Yeah, that's probably it. 
yeah, really, really cool timing. I mean, the dive in itself is fine, but I, th I want you to work on that that wave management. It would mm -hmm. make you. I think if you guys just nail down the wave management and a siege composition as obnoxious as Caitlyn did in, you guys will win. Like, especially against stuff that can't deal with it, like Zeri and Kaiser and Vayne and things like that. You're going to be winning any phase like 85% of the time, and you're going to be tilting the enemy AD carry because they won't be able to see us. Because you got Caitlyn's got 93 CS and Zeri was on 64, which is pretty good by itself. But you could make that Zeri number down as low as like 40, I'd say. Right, if you, I would have helped push in the wave a little more. Yeah, help with wave push in the wave, and then when it's like in a more neutral state, just be in a, an aggressive stance with decent, like semi aggressive vision to potentially stop from. The jungler would have to help at that point. If you're going right. to freeze the lane like this and set up an aggressive position and their enemy bot lane can do nothing, the only thing that they that, that would do to change it is if their enemy jungler were to come down and help push out the wave. Like, the help will show, show up, basically, and it will mm -hmm. make you go back. Okay. Um, so you'd need, like, generally some aggressive vision. So you'd do, like, in this tri brush here, this, this brush here. Uh, you would need the river. But, you, you know, it, you get, with Zidin, you get your spell field these three ward stacks up relatively quickly anyway so after the first recall or close to that you shouldn't be too long in terms of you able to set that kind of like freeze lock in screw the enemy team over a lot okay all right i like you venturing i like this movement um Yep, that ward's good. Nice use of oracles before going into the brushes. Yeah, bot lane's already been pushed in. You're doing the right thing here. I'm lucky. You don't want to get caught. Okay, so you, the, the, the movement overall has been fine. It's been fine. I've got no complaints. There's good ward, good oracles. Good assist help attempt over here. I think after all of that is over, though, you want to ward. Make sure you get rid of the rest of your wards if you can. So mm -hmm. I would advise like a ward. You probably seen the other coaching sessions. Like a ward here would be good. Right. I don't know if you can see my mouse wiggling, like around uh -huh. here. Um, and then if the mid lane needs pushing, if Victor say Victor was on lane half HP, you'd then help push that in so he could recall as well. But you just basically right. want to like get back down to bot lane now because it's been a long time now since you've been moving mm -hmm. around. So I think right. the movement itself is fine. I mean that ward there is fine. Warding in the middle lane is fine, but you would need to like instantly recall. Okay, to refresh my ward. Yeah, exactly. And also, yeah. So yeah. So that would have prevented that. But you, when you, if you overextend and. If you're having to assist mid in the rooms, and then there's nothing else to do, getting this this ward here was fine, absolutely fine. I would like to see a ward in the middle of the lane, but then it's just straight up recall. Some games mm -hmm. in league are support, particularly if you're really far ahead actually, or really far behind in the games that are like super snowboardy either way, you'll be recording a lot just to get those ward charges back. I had a game recently where I did nothing for three minutes and it was just literally just putting down wards, recalling, putting down wards, recalling. Um, yeah. So they have too a bad. question about that, yeah, actually. So <clears throat> I, I feel like generally I like to prioritize vision, but I guess my question is when is, is there ever a time where that's a bad thing? So like, I feel like sometimes I back when there might be, like a team fight breaks out like right after I back or something like that. So is there like timings where you shouldn't back for vision or does your is your team kind of supposed to understand that like if you're not there they shouldn't be in a position to get caught out or how does how okay how would so you... that is gonna be yeah that's a it's a tough one to answer because there are a lot of variables into every single situation. The raw basics would be you know if there's a key objective being done uh, at the same time and you're near it don't recall just yet. So like, you know, if dragon's going on, Baron, except there's a tower push, you know, your team would rather have you there than you recall unless you have absolutely no resources or no, no mana to help anyway. Okay. Um, 
then yeah i mean if you want to recall and say like you, you need more wards or whatever try and be vocally um with pings essentially communicate with your team say that back off back off back off i need to get wards or whatever and then hope okay. that your team will listen that's one thing i've seen a lot of supports like not necessarily do is just communicate to their team that they're wanting to recall or reset yeah, I don't do that myself, and I, I definitely think that's like one place I really need to improve on is I don't really ping a lot because I don't know if like my calls are right, so I, I almost get like scared to ping in case it's wrong. Okay. Well, what I'd say is like if you feel like you need to recall, like you need war charges, like if you have zero or one war charge left and you don't feel like there's anywhere right now on the map that you can do and you want to recall, just recall, and just if you see anyone looking to be aggressive, just back them off. Okay, with pings. Yeah, because they might have not realized that you're recalling. I think any form of communication is fine. Um, if you're scared about making calls or whatever like that, that that's, that's absolutely fine. But I think you should always be communicating what you need to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. so if, but the big one is yeah, just, it, the big one for supports is the ones the main support call isn't that isn't happening in these coaching sessions that I see is they're recalling and they're not telling their AD carry or in you know, in the mid game the people near them that they're actually going back so do utilize them that's what they're for and use mm -hmm. the audio pings as well rather than going like spamming the gold amount okay. Aud audio cues are much better all right, let's go back. What did you buy? Moby boots. Almost got sure it is. You don't have a control ward. Please tell me you buy a control ward. Did you buy a control ward? No, that's illegal. <laughs> okay, it's happened twice now. That's super illegal. You should you should know better your plan. <laughs> um, yeah, at this point, if you've already been feeling like you've been roaming around the map a lot already, you need to be buying two control wards. Mm -hmm. If it's not been much been happening, you can maybe get away with one in order to be able to have like potentially enough money to buy Shredders on the next recall. Okay, but you should have control ads at all stages of the game, at least one after the first right. recall. Ideally after the first recall. Sometimes after the first recall, uh, you can't quite squeeze it in and then you know, you're prioritizing like the tier 2 boots over it, which is, is potentially fine depending on the situation. But yeah, you, you from that point onwards, you absolutely must have a control ward. Okay. Especially if you've got the money for it. Yeah, I don't really have an excuse there. Okay, so this fight... I'm just trying to work out what's happened here. So Zeri's died, you've got two dead, your junglers are dead. I don't think you can fight for this. Um, you've got no jungler to contest with this, so you've got no smite. So taking this is going to be really difficult. Um, also, one thing is you never want to be split when going into any dragon fight, okay? Mm -hmm. This is like dragon rule number one. Uh, this is what a lot of teams die on, even in competitive, is that they put themselves in like, like this. So what could easily end up happening is that one of you are going to get a 1v2 for about, the, for about two seconds, and that could be enough to screw over this entire fight. Yeah, that kind of ends up happening. So, here for example, they could easily switch onto you. Victor's then left having to chase. You end up having to die or use your ulti and then they can switch to Victor. Um, I will say though, you do have a Kiana right in your ass, like, in the middle. So, you, you shouldn't be here anyway because you have fewer players around you right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. if, if Victor's gonna go in... Victor probably wouldn't go in actually if you weren't here. That's what our property was saying. I think if you just ignore him in this situation, just let them have the dragon. It's their first Drake, and it's 13 minutes into the game. This is this dragon is pointless, really, essentially, for potential. The, the amount of risk that is going here is insane. So I'd, I would be like, no, I don't want any part of this. Um, mm -hmm. I might hang around mid because I'm Zillion. I can ult myself if the cannon chooses to dive me, but I can soak up some XP here. We just need to back off. Yeah, agreed. Okay. So yeah, that's exactly what happens. So yeah, you guys get picked <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. 
if you are ever going to help um, in a dragon fight, honestly, that's probably the best case. If that is just a one for one, that's absolutely like amazing that happened actually, considering the circumstances. Um, I think I think we get a kill on Kiana. She overchases. I think it might can collapses. I think. I'm not really so much looking at the mechanical prowess here. Okay, so none of that should have happened. I hate that that actually ended up being good for you guys. Um, yeah, I hate it because it breaks every like fundamental thing here. But if you're ever gonna help on the dragon from here, you want to path with your team rather than looking to sandwich. Mm -hmm. So you should be pathing towards the victor this way. Yeah. I think if you're playing literally any other support there, you that none of that probably would have happened actually, just because of the uh, the escapability on Zillion is pretty high. Probably not a word, but I'll just made that up. No, I, I, I hear you. I. I definitely agree that like I feel like sometimes they get out just because of my champion pick over mm. like yeah. it actually being good decisions I'm making. Yeah. I mean now like I hate that you guys are staying as well. Um you, you guys are waiting like 10, 15, maybe even 20 seconds here for Kane to get from base to do the dragon. Yeah. And you guys have got Kate's got 1.1k gold, you've got 1.3k gold, Caitlyn could have taken out this turret. Like, there's a lot of things that could have been done here. That ward needs to go. Because now, yeah, so now because you guys waited for the dragon, you guys aren't recalling again. So you guys, it was just established that you guys have got 2,600 gold between you right now in your pockets. So now you guys are going to get caught up, caught up here. So I'll be interested to see how you get yourself out of this. Saving the ward there for Caitlyn. Because you guys don't... I'm just going to toggle the vision. I mean, you probably know about the fiddlesticks at least, but the vision... is pretty dark back here and things. So... I wouldn't want to be sticking around in the area for too long. Yeah, because you could just ult over the wall. But he did show mid and killed Victor with the uh, yeah. Jace. Just, just in general, like when you you probably got the right. war charges because I think you probably used them anyway from the yeah sort of prolonged fight. So once again, it's just just nice to tidy a recall of timings here that need to be worked on. So you got after you won that fight, you had two options. You had you, I think you could have got this turret or you could have recalled. Eva's fine. Reset come out with four items, four resources, and then go back towards the river, towards the dragon via bot lane, or for, via mid, depending on if the wave's already crashing at the mid turret, um, and then play for the drake again, but with four resources and more gold than the enemy, so if they fight again, well, you're stronger, you're even stronger than you were before, um, and hopefully in better circumstances, because you would have had better vision set up than them. So, right. so if they want to play in for this dragon when you guys have more items, then let them do so, because you're probably going to win the fight. Yeah. I think sometimes I, I feel like we're like so eager to play aggressively that we don't back when we should. I, I'd, I'd argue like being aggressive in terms of recalls as well is super important. It's difficult to be aggressive when you're missing 2,500 gold worth of items. Um... So, being aggressive by like shoving in the minion wave so they've got big wave to deal with and then recalling and spending your gold to forcing the enemy team to negotiate whether or not to stay for the wave or not. I think that's a really aggressive play. It doesn't, it's not as spectacular as getting a kill or anything like that, but it, it does have a huge game impact. Yeah. Alright, let's see what you do here. So you know the fight's probably going to be breaking around it here. I want to see it. So in this situation here when a fight's looking to break out, I want uh, vision. Okay? So even in this brush that I that you're in right now, I would put a ward in just in case 
this fight leads downwards. So, okay. So you don't have to worry about, like, in the middle of a fight, setting the, up the vision for this. Yeah. So it's all about anticipation, um, getting the feel of the fight. If you feel like they're likely to become, well, there's a good chance that they could come into you here. You want to set up the vision here first. Just in mm -hmm. case it leads that way. Right. Kind of staggered. It's not really your fault at all. Well, you do get the ward there eventually. Just 10 seconds ago would have been fine. Um, it's okay, ward. It's kind of cute the mechanic got stunned. I think Caitlyn here, once again, she could just use her ulti. Just the poke. It's not a big deal. Nice stun. We've got spell shielded though. He's still got ulti. Really nice amount of crowd control here. Yeah, in terms of like the Zillion mechanics, I don't think there's a huge amount like I need to really talk about. Um, I think you're playing Zillion fine, apart from maybe like the mana and poke management with the mana flow band stuff I was talking about, mm -hmm. and maybe like poking in the minion wave a little bit more to make sure you're not stuck at the turret. Yeah. But in terms of like the actual champion. Fighting, it seems fine on my end. Like, you know, you seem to be using your slows effectively. You seem quite comfortable on the champion. Um, more looking at macro things and, and wave management. Yeah, I think that's where I okay, definitely so could improve a lot more. So here I'll be on high alert. Just want to see how you handle a situation. Okay. I think the exhaust is a fine choice there as well, just in case she went a bit crazy still after that. Um, yeah, I mean, nice double stun. <laughs> That's all I can say about that, really. Um, yeah, he definitely seems to know what you're doing. Nice slow. Unfortunately, you didn't ult yourself though. That was a little, a little sad. Yeah, I think the, and um, I don't. I still have some things I need to learn on Zillion, but I think maybe the play was to like bomb myself once, flash, and then bomb myself again for the stun, but instead I kind of didn't do that. I think... Yeah, I mean, you definitely could do a play like that, for sure. Um, I think that would have been pretty difficult to set up, still. I mean, you got the double stun anyway. Um, the only thing I could, I could say is... is on Zillion, it's good to be aware of where the damage is going to be coming from from the enemy team, so you know where to when to anticipate that burst. So the Jace yeah. was 4-0 at that point. Um, I mean, you respected the Kiana. She was 3-2, which is still potentially a lot of damage coming throughout. So the only really people that you can kind of disrespect in terms of damage is, is the Zeri and the Morgana. But it's not been going great top side. Oh, Jace has also got 172 CS. So yeah, so Jace is... <laughs> Super, super, super fed. Um, but I say that though, your Caitlyn's got more gold than her overall. 9.3k to the 8.9k. Um, but yeah, so he's like the one main damage source that you would need to respect the most. So after, like these things happen, like you're going to die occasionally like this. The only thing I would say is just make sure you learn from that. And just go, okay, and reevaluate, look at the scoreboard, check again who's fed or not. And... Next time, just preemptively use your ulti earlier against the Jace in that situation. But I wouldn't like be too hung up about it. Yeah, I think I had thought about that going into the fight, but I didn't know who he was going to turn on um, since I flashed mm. into the fight. So I wanted to hold it in case he decided to. I think it was Kane and River. In case he turned on Kane, I wanted to have the ult, but instead he went on me and I just. Yeah, I, I, I get that him. completely. I absolutely understand. At least the next time you know, like, you know, he's going to basically one shot me if I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so, I mean sometimes yeah, sometimes you can only find that information out once that happens. That's just how you use that information as the game goes on. Um this is very greedy by yourself, I'd say. Um Yeah. You don't want to be doing this by yourself because if you do get caught out, I mean you are playing Zillion so you can kinda of like zip away a little bit, but even this, I think, is super, super, super aggressive. And also, you've lost vision here because Caitlyn stopped pushing in this wave. 
I guess these yeah, minions are spawning I... out, so she might actually be okay there, but it's just it's just super by yourself. I don't like this at all, especially when dragons are about to come up. So yeah, you... and I think I knew that because I like stopped for a second and evaluated if I even wanted to go for the vision mm. ward at all. And then I was thinking like, okay, well, I'll just like pressure it. And if she chases me, I'll just run away. But I know that that probably won't always be an option. Yeah, so if it feels a bit... If you feel un unsure, that you really want to be like 100% sure in a situation that you can take this ward out. I wouldn't even like, even if you only felt like 60-70% certain, it's just not worth the risk. There's an yeah. objective coming up. Um, you're by yourself. Just make sure you got the, as much decent defensive. You I mean you've got lots of vision on the map. Honestly, the overall the team vision here is great. You've got decent you know, entrances here to the dragon scene. There's a nice little ward in this tri brush. You've got, if, if I saw a control ward there, I would honestly just zip around. See if the Squire's orb there, whack that, just make sure they can't use that, so they can't use get vision on the dragon. And just put ward in this brush. And then if no one was playing for the dragon at that point, I'll just recall, get my wards back, and then go back into the river again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd hit, I'd hit that, yeah, and then you want to just put a ward here. Doesn't You don't have to keep fighting over the control ward. <laughs> I think I tunneled a little hard for the ward, yeah. honestly. Yeah, at least you know that she's there. I think that you could have probably slowed her first rather than here. She was quite close to you there, but whatever. Um, so you guys are three dragons, so you have a lot of freedom in the entire game. So when the next dragon spawns, you can either pay for the Baron or you can get the Dragon Soul. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do too much on the map now if you if you guys don't feel too comfortable doing it. My main concern is like I'm looking at this J split pushing the entire time and I'm just wondering like, how much he's gonna get if you guys don't necessarily collapse on him. So you got, got a good you got a lot of movement here. And Jace is entering into the river. I mean Kate can even get in range here to ult. Which I mean he dies. So their best player is dead. He doesn't have TP. Um, and your jungler is right near the objective of Baron, and their jungler is bot side. I would be emphasizing a lot to my team that we should be doing this objective. I'm not sure if you have any <laughs> wards. You've got two wards. You don't have control wards on you, though. Did you forget to buy them again? I think I used them when I was setting up for Dragon. Okay. Um... Anyway, you got two control. You, you got two normal wards here, so you, you set up the, the the dragon. Honestly, you've got the luxury here. You can see Zari here. Jace is dead. Fiddle's head. So you're probably fine to go into this brush. So I'd put a ward here where this ward enemy ward is, and then a ward at the back of near this red, and then just emphasize. You know, we can just do do Baron really. Especially when Caitlyn's so fed as well, she can probably kill it relatively quickly. I mean, she's pushed in mid now, so it's a really good opportunity. Yeah, you guys are doing it anyway. I don't like you all at the back of this pit, though. I don't know if you know, but Baron does more damage if you're behind it. Yeah, I think we were all trying to stop the Kiana, but we ultimately decide just to yeah. leave the okay. Baron. So at this point, after the failed Baron attempt, I'd be like, okay... Okay, good. Let's just slow it down a bit. We've got Dragon Soul and coming around the corner. Um, enemy team, we can take one objective here. If they if they all are at the dragon to defend that, then we can get Baron. If they end up defending Baron, then we get Dragon Soul. I mean, that means we just need to wait out the Baron for a few minutes. You guys are in a in a win win situation here, ideally, if you guys play it right. How many war charges have you got? I want to see you. you... You're setting a Baron Vision, which is good. That's the objective that's up. Okay. Playing from the back, I like that. That's good. Good positioning. Okay, right. I've been keeping a track on your wards. So you've got two wards here in your pocket. As you're entering this brush here, I would love you to ward it. Just straight away. Just to make sure that no one is coming 
through up here in particular. It gives you an extra second to get away. Plus, you just want to, if you can get deep vision in random spots like this, then you want to make sure the wards are there anyway. So, the ward should be placed there. Okay. Because you can see the enemy team is starting to funnel down. So, this would give you, this would have given you much more notice in terms of that. Wait, I've got the wrong vision on. So, yeah, you can't actually see them anywhere right now. So Kane's going to walk into loads of people. So just take it back again. See, so yeah, that brush should absolutely be warded as you go past it. Okay. Would still be looking to play super far back. Don't want to get hit by a Jace. I mean, Victor needs to recall. Um, if, if, if you see Victor with this mana and you got this health, <laughs> I'd be like, guys, just back off. We're going to get stuff bot side anyway because the Atrox is pushing in. I'll just ping mm -hmm. my team back and just recall. Mm -hmm. So you're doing the right thing here. Would have liked to see more pings, like mentioned, like going back off, but whatever. It's fine. Alright, what did you get? You got two control wards each. So you got dragon. Unfortunately, in practice tour, I don't think you can see when dragon spawning, but um, must be soon. Nice little catch. Remember, like, okay, so yeah, so this happened here now. So if you're ever in like deep enemy territory, or any mm -hmm. enemy territory, like here, you had a good position, just a ward over the wall. Just in case anyone was going to collapse over, over. Mm -hmm. so just giving your team vision for the fights that are happening. Oh, so okay. you do it, you do it, but it's just a little late, just a tiny bit late. A bit earlier would have been really good while you're waiting there. Mm -hmm. Unlucky you weren't able to do that. That is <laughs> nice water in the middle of the lane. Good. Okay. I mean, there's nothing you guys can do here now, though, at this point. I would just be like... Dragon spawning in under a minute now. Let's just prep up for that. Caitlyn's dead. Caitlyn's actually your strongest person on the team right now, so let's just like, back off, chill. You've used all your war charges now on most of them, and a couple are controlled already, so it just should just should you should just be looking to reset and get those wards back into your inventory as quickly as possible, because you've got no wards in your, on your item at the moment. Yeah, and I think I... Substitute that by rotating my pink ward. Um, I put it on dragon, clear the vision, then put it. Yeah, that's fine to do. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I think you could have recalled like 30 seconds ago before dragon spawned, like after Caitlyn died. I don't think just reset. Because you could be ending up in a situation that Caitlyn like Caitlyn's just walked out into the field now. She's got all her mm -hmm. items, which could mean to a baron rotation. But because you haven't, you didn't reset. 30 seconds before the dragon spawned. It means you don't have wards to then put down at the Baron. Right. So you could end up into a little bit of vision issue then. Do you guys win this or lose this? We win this. Okay, good. I was going to say. <laughs> I think just getting the objectives, just focus on getting the objectives is fine. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. I didn't want to rewind that. Okay, so yeah. Just a little bit of a uh, misplay from the team overall. I went back way too far, my bad. Could have stayed all teams. You guys get caught out. Um. Yeah, so I'd say the only th the thing I would suggest that are these objectives. When you're going for one of these objectives, do look what, even if it's just looking at the minimap, just seeing the mm -hmm. positioning of your split pusher. Because okay. if, if they were to collapse here anyway, it does. And if your top laner is in a position where they're by themselves near a turret, it means they're probably getting an objective, at least anyway. Mm -hmm. Like here, for example, I don't think there's any n huge amount of necessary need to potentially chase this down too much. Like after that bomb misses, that first one misses, like there's no benefit of really landing on the second one. So just back off as you see far away. Okay. So I just went like, yeah, yeah back off. We've got an in inhib to get here. Just focus on getting that. 
because now Caitlin's now like in Narnia trying to <laughs> hunt down a Zeri, uh, which is relatively safe. I mean, there's an inhib right here. I think getting a bit distracted by kills rather than just focusing on the objective. Yeah. And she, yeah, and then she gets caught on, yeah. But I think I'm going to put some, of, uh, actually, a lot of the blame on you because you kind of like encouraged that kind of situation to happen. It felt like. Like you're hunting mm -hmm. down this area. Like after the first bomb missed, it's like okay, I can't, we can't stun her. We're probably not going to be able to get a kill on there. Let's just back off, yeah. reposition. It's fine. Um, but you know, on the flip side, because your split pusher is by themselves top, they're going to get top turret, but it will, might still lead to them getting Baron him. Which they don't get actually, Victor, but they could. Ah, uh, yeah. okay, but it's a zone. Good job again. <clears throat> so once again, you're doing a good job setting up vision around the objectives. Okay, I would be. I knew that was going to happen as well. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so once again, like getting vision around the objective is fine. Going for too much, going for kills, not fine. So just relax a little bit. Um, don't need... I think I thought the Victor was rotating through our, through the side of the jungle that I was on. I didn't realize he was like looping up top, so I went in for an aggressive play to like kind of sandwich him, and then didn't realize that the Victor wasn't anywhere mm. near. Okay, well, I'm just gonna say I don't like any of anything you just said anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. So the the two of, of easiest objectives on the map right now are Baron and this exposed inhibitor. Mm -hmm. Baron, I mean, you guys have such a huge lead anyway. You guys should be thinking about Baron a lot. I would say even, like, potentially looking for this ward here. I don't know if you managed to use a Scryer's plant before that, because that would have helped out a lot in terms of knowing whether or not you could go for this anyway. No, it's down. So, let's put it to your vision. Okay, so the only person you can see on the map is Zeri. And you know the mm -hmm. enemy team wants to prevent you from doing Baron. Uh, I guess they do have two people dead. But I'd be still worried about where there's Jesus since he's not here. In my mind, I'd be like, okay, let's just hang on just a second. Let's see if Jace shows top. If he doesn't, and then just waiting to see if we've got someone near us to put mm -hmm. more aggressive vision. I think while you're waiting to do aggressive vision, you could just do controlled in the, in the Baron pit. That would be right. an okay start while you're waiting for like, you know, this guy to finish his blue buff because you and then if you just ping that you need help here like victor will come like victor will probably look to push in this wave and then he would come to baron mm -hmm. i think yeah, this I think is I super risky more patient yeah I wasn't. just think more about objective control rather than the thing to do kills because you like dodge yeah i can see it. you dodge the key you're like okay he's used his skill shot i'm ready to go in uh maybe one shot yeah that's if he might still... Okay, now Victor's now trying to... Yeah, I'm going to say... I'm actually going to be quite harsh here. I'm going to say the last two team fights here that have happened, the, the mess has actually kind of started from you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So yeah, you do need to just relax. Just think about the objectives a little bit more. Just be be, be clean. I mean, the, the, think about how you've got such a massive lead over them. You've got four dragons. You've got full control of the map. The enemy only has one turret. Uh, the, the past enemy team only has one champion that you really guys are kind of worried about, and that's the Jace. Let's just, you know, your team's super strong. The only way you're going to blow the lead is by individually, people individually getting picked off. So just work right. as a unit. Uh, don't, just, just don't take any risks, really. You don't have to take any risks. The only time you have to take risks are when you're behind. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to start face checking bushes to make sure you know, try and get vision and things like that. But you don't have to face check this bush. You can yeah. just get you can get vision there whenever you like when your team's here because you have you're way way super far ahead. So mm -hmm. when you're super far ahead, just try and mitigate risks to to near zero. Okay. Because you don't have anything to you don't have much to gain, but you have a lot to lose. I think your team just ends up cleaning up here, then, isn't it? It's just the game after the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, GG. Alright, so, so some things that I'm happy with, and you know, happy, happy with your playstyle. 
So Zidian mechanics overall, I think generally pretty good. Um, I don't play Zidian too much myself, but from what I saw there, it looked solid. I would, like if I saw it from a mechanical point of view, I'd think, you know, you're high yellow anyway. Um, I think this is the highest I've been. I usually, uh, usually rank kind of gives me anxiety, so like I don't play it that much. Um, but I think having the duo is kind of helping with that a little bit. I've hit platinum on my own before, but I feel like it, the anxiety like really started kicking in when I got to platinum for some reason, even though I was still doing fine. Um, yeah. I get it. Um, so the duo obviously seems to be good. You seem to be, you just need to communicate on, I want to see better use of freezing the lane. Mm -hmm. I want to see better use of shoving in a big wave. And then recalling off of that and getting to spend your gold and making the enemy team suffer by having to stay under the, the turret for a long time. Right. Um, but the positives, uh, let's just start with the positives. It's positives, city and mechanics, happy with that overall. I think there were a couple of times, once or twice, maybe you could have eat them because they were nearish, but like and you chose the double bomb instead, but the double bomb landed. So I'm not going to critique it too much. So I think overall, city and your know, mechanics is, is fine. The yeah. movement around the map looking to roam was good. On the whole, positive. Um, we'll mention again, do recall when you run out of wards. They look right. toward, after a big roam, look to ward dump in the area if it's suitable to do so. Um, particularly around that mid lane. Recall, get your wards back, and then go back into lane. Mm -hmm. Um... So those are like the two biggest like uh, individual things I would say um, that were the big positives. Um, your your aggressive vision was good and bad. Um, mm -hmm. If you are moving into enemy territory, do look towards and get vision for your team as much as possible. You did that mm -hmm. a couple of times, a little bit late around that Morgana timing. You didn't do the one on the tri brush, which could have been quite important overall. Um, but do mm -hmm. make sure you got vision around those team fights that are happening, and when you are deep. Um, okay. But I think I think the thing, if you guys are going to keep duoing together, I think the biggest way you are going to increase your win rate alone from laning phase is just that wave management. Just don't right. get too greedy. Don't get stack up too gold. Like too much in gold. Like evaluate how much gold you guys have. Like discuss. Like okay, I can actually get a good buy here. Um, you know, if we if we stack up this wave, we've got like ten minions here that they will have to deal with under the turret. If we just like you know, if we if we if we just nuke this wave coming up with all mm -hmm. of our AOE and then just go back, like it doesn't matter if you end up taking like a caster minion or two. Like it's just all about the urgency. We're going back to okay. back into lane really really quickly. Then you can like zoom out the the Caitlyn with your with your speed up, and then you can rewind in the fountain and then speed yourself up, and you'd be lane super super quick. Mm -hmm. Um. And then you can then set, like, from that point onwards, because the enemy isn't in the lane, you can then set up a little bit of aggressive vision in that the jungle. So you've got that prepped up, so you don't have to be worrying about the jungler. And then right. you can then set up really, like, n nice lane dominance, basically. Okay. Um, I do have one question, though. So I feel like this game was a little bit more standard in the sense that, like, I feel like the Morgana didn't roam that much. Um, but there's been other games where, like, the enemy is like a pike support and they're constantly roaming mid so i match the roam and usually like we'll get a kill mid but my adc dies like over and over and over when i roam um and it usually ends up being like a one for one trade so i guess my question is like if the enemy has a very roam roaming like aggressive type support and you're matching the roam like is there times where you shouldn't do that and just like prioritize keeping your own adc alive rather than roaming mid to try to prevent the the 2v1 okay so yeah i understand what you're saying so i'm gonna put some hypotheticals here so let's just say both ad carriers are relatively even um i think that that's okay. that, that so both ad carriers are relatively even like in health and resources and levels and gold and stuff and uh -huh. both supports are roaming around a lot uh well their their, their support is roaming a lot yeah you have two options you can stay and punish the enemy ad carry or you can roam to try and meet up with that. Now, that really depends on wave state 
really and where your jungler is and where the enemy jungler is because then we're talking about quite oh. high like there are articles here so if you their jungler is nearby and their and the enemy support is roaming but your jungler is like ganking top all you mm -hmm. can do is just spam ping them back mid just make it okay. like, make as much noise as possible mid like give question mark like missing missing like whatever um right because if you end up helping mid you'll end up in a 2v3 and then you might die both of you then might die and it ends up being super bad at that point yeah i think um i think it ended up being like a 3v3 most of the time like both junglers were there both supports were there and the mid laners were there but in the meantime i feel like after the fight kind of ended the pike would like rotate back to lane faster than i could and then would kill my adc yeah while i was kind of rotating back okay. bot lane so yeah so that kind of it is it is difficult when that happens so <laughs> there's just a lot of like hypotheticals going on here so if you yeah. are if you're having if the if your AD carry is having the issue a lot where they're dying a lot and you're dual with them, mm -hmm. there are two things that the AD carry need, well the main one that the AD carry needs to learn is is wave management, which we didn't really right. see much there. So they need to understand that you're not going to be in the lane, mm -hmm. and they need to call out to you, for example. So say if like the wave is slow pushing towards the enemy turret, you might need to come down at that point and make sure that that wave is completely pushed in. To make sure they're not right. stuck in an overextended laning position. Because you remember where when I said twice in that laning phase in that game, you guys were stuck in that position where super deep in lane, but the wave hasn't crashed to the turret. So you guys were kind right. of overextended. Yeah. That is like your AD carry needs to like warn you that that situation is going to happen. And then you can come down and assist, push in the lane with them. And then okay. your AD carry then re can recall safely. And then you might want to recall then as well, or then you you're open then to roam to mid. Okay, so if something I guess like happens while I help break the freeze, then like I guess that's just like a something that's almost like inevitable because like, I'd have to be bot lane to help break the freeze if it was kind of yeah. frozen in front of the enemy tower. Yeah, so in that situation, like say for example, the enemy AD carry is stronger than your AD carry, mm -hmm. and they're freezing the lane, you can't roam because you'll need to. If you roam, then your AD carry is one hundred percent screwed. Um, okay. You just need the only thing you can do at that point, and then what you should be doing anyway is trying to get defensive mid lane vision or like around the river at least. So mm -hmm. you know that little pixel brush. I don't know if you know the the one that's just like a circle near above the dragon. Yes. Yeah, that that ward is kind of like super high priority. Um, so you'd, your emphasis would be like to ward that kind of area if you can't get up to that pixel brush because there's already like a fight happening to mid then like near just anywhere in the river is fine okay um but yeah the only way you can then mitigate the enemy support from roaming as much is making sure you've got decent vision and if you are going to be staying bot then you are looking to utilize wave management to the highest potential by like freezing the wave in the middle of the lane once it eventually starts slow pushing towards the enemy, just keep that wave stacked up, be patient, and then just launch in a massive wave of 12 minions and then reset. Okay. Yeah, I think I wasn't helping break the freeze, and he died a couple times because of that. So I guess that that would be my fault then, because I was ro roaming mid because the mid laner was pinging for me to come. And then meanwhile, uh, he got kind of caught out in a really bad like yeah. wave setup. Because like you can easily roam, for example, um, if needed, when like the the wave is you know about to be like shoved in really nicely, when the last few minions are about to fall down, you can just go off into the river and just roam because you know they'll be safe. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna the enemy AD carry isn't gonna tank twelve minions coming towards the turret. It's impossible because right. they'll they'll die to minions. <laughs> um, so when when you know they're in a stable situation where it's like there's enemy ad carry there's absolutely nothing he can do to stop this massive wave from crashing into their turret then you're free to just you're free to recall you're free to to go to mid um like even if you get the earlier recall in you can still with your extra rewards or resources come in you can go straight towards mid lane and potentially counteract that yeah i usually try to if if there's if i know that enemy support will roam a lot i usually try to drop a pink in the pixel so that way like at least they know if i'm not there that the that the support is roaming but 
I think I think yeah, I think my mistake then was not breaking the freeze from the enemy ADC um to help get push help the minions push back. Um so I'll definitely work on that then. So I don't know, do you watch any of the the VODs together? Um not not really. Um I I watched I watched my VODs back a fair amount just because I, I try to see like where I'm making mistakes, but obviously it helps to have like a different perspective because like you were saying before, you know, things that might seem right are actually wrong, but it just ends up working out in your favor. So it's nice to have that like perspective of someone pointing out like, well, it worked in your favor, but like you really shouldn't have done that to begin with. But mm. I don't know if he watches VODs back. I'm not sure. I would suggest because you guys have playing duo together a lot. I would suggest when you get into a game like that, where it's like the enemy support is roaming around a lot, you guys should, after the game, you should just, you know, one of you should just share your screen on Discord um, of the game and of the, the VOD and just have a look. Okay, what could we have done, done here to prevent, like, you from the AD carry from dying in lane when the support came back down? Like, was there a wave issue? Um, did we not push it in enough? Did we not freeze the wave enough? Just have a look. And, and I think it's, it's if you're going to be during with someone a lot, I think it is pretty valuable that both of you are then looking at your VODs together, like at least occasionally, just like one game every, you don't have to do it like super hardcore or anything, but you can just do one game, I don't know, Yeah. after I every think we'll 10. Do that. Yeah, I think we'll do that, because I think usually we're on the same page, but I think sometimes when it comes to like me rotating a lot, we sometimes get into disagreements about like whether I should have or shouldn't have roamed, so I think for those games it might be helpful for us to watch it back together just to see like what what should have happened maybe yeah so yeah do 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 yeah because there is two of you is it's difficult as you were mentioning it is difficult to point out some of the stuff when it's just yourself but if there's someone else next to you they'll be able to see stuff as well um mm -hmm. so yeah um okay. oh, and also don't forget to buy control wards all right if i ever see that yeah. on you again <laughs> i will report you to the control ward police <laughs> okay <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah even if you're on like 50 gold and you have to wait just wait 25 gold for a control one okay um, okay yeah we'll yeah. do so. i usually do but I, I i think in that game i was like so eager to like rotate back onto the map because i felt like fights were breaking out that i just didn't yeah, buy them but yeah. that's not really good excuse either so yes i will work on yeah, that just, just make sure that's all right. <laughs> okay all right uh, do you have any okay. questions before we go anything else no, I think you answered them. I was kind of asking them during game. Like, my main ones were more macro-centric, which were, like, when to roam and when not to roam. And then, like, how much should you prioritize vision? I was kind of asking that during the game about, like, is it ever bad to, like, back to get more wards? But you're kind of saying, as long as I communicate to my team, like, I'm backing. So, like, please yeah, exactly. kind of chill, chill for a second while, like, yeah. come back. We should be good. Yeah, as long as you... Yeah, as long as... If you ever have, like, one or zero ward charges left you should always be thinking about okay i how can i recall basically I, I would like in your head it should be like we need to recall like that's like in the very very near future in the next like 30 seconds i or sooner ideally okay <clears throat> yeah i'll definitely keep that in the back of my head as i play yeah. you know future games okay all right well all the best hope you two climb thanks and, thank uh, you very much i really appreciate your help that's right thank you for booking and uh, yeah thanks much appreciate it. take care have a you too bye bye Nice. Whew. That was a good session. I haven't done a Zillion coaching session for a really long time, actually, so it was kind of refreshing to see rather than the same, you know, like Nami and Nami and Zyra. <laughs> it's like Nami and Zyra. One plays Nami and Zyra. Oh, I hope you guys maybe took took some something from that as well. Um, that one was a paid coaching session on my website, bizzleberry.com. If you ever want to book anything there, let me. Well, you know, you know where to go. Um. I will be opening up free coaching session on Twitch soon. Um, I'm feeling a bit better now, so probably starting from the 28th of March onwards, we'll probably be opening up again if anyone has the points for that. So, yeah. 